Crazy story time. I got this story through my Instagram DMs. Thank you so much to McKenna Her. So many years ago when McKenna was younger, she had a neighbor who had the exact same name as her, oddly enough. And they would go around to houses in their neighborhood and play detective and try to figure out clues and whatnot. There weren't that many houses on their street or around them and they were pretty close with all of their neighbors. So they would just kind of go to all of these different houses. One day McKenna and her neighbor McKenna decide to go to the neighbor McKenna's house to play detective. When they get there, they're on the back porch and they're finding their clues and everything and they find these little spots and marks that kind of look like blood. Her dad was the only one home at the time and so they just decided to keep looking around and playing the game. As they continue, they find more and more of these weird red spots and McKenna turns to her neighbor and jokes around and says, what if your dad is a murderer? And of course they're joking and they just laugh it off. One day down the road, he goes missing and he, they cannot find him for like a week. After that week, the cops end up finding his car near a bridge and inside the car is a note. In the note, he admits to unaliving his own mother by her 15 times. And this is a picture of McKenna's father, who is to this day still in jail. But what's crazy about the story is that one day down the road, he ends up doing this to his mother. But years before, McKenna and McKenna found those really convincing looking blood stains everywhere outside. So they believe that he has not only done this to his mother, but somebody else, because years before they found some suspicious looking blood stains, right? And the proof is in the pudding. Here's the article that she sent me. It's crazy to think that so many things can happen as you're a kid and you don't realize it until you grow up or somebody gets arrested. I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments if you think that he had done this before. And if you have a crazy story, make sure to DM to me on Instagram and, of course, follow me and follow for more stories. Were they trying to sex traffic us or were they just swingers? Let me know what you think. So a few days ago, my roommate and I were accidentally in Florida at the same time and we were like one town over. So we decided to hang out and I met her in St. Pete and we just hung out at the beach. For reference, this is the bikini that I was wearing. I think it's a normal bikini. My roommate and I go into the ocean. We're just kind of standing in the water and then we get approached by this man and this woman. She comes up to us and says, you guys look just like my daughter's age. How old are you guys? And I stop and I say, yes. She looks at my roommate and she says 13 years old. And then she looks at me and she says 15. If you really want to go look at my Instagram and find my roommate, she does not look like she's 13. I don't think I present as a 15 year old. Anyway, so I say to her, oh, well, we're 21. And I asked how old they were and he said that he was 52 and that she was 40. Then they proceed to tell us that when we were walking in the ocean, they took notice of us because we were two really hot Asians. Back it up real quick because you just thought that we were 13 and 15 and you're calling us hot? She tells me that the man that she's with is her boyfriend and she needs to go get a cigarette. So she leaves the ocean and she leaves us with this man who is going on and on about all the properties he owns and his like business where he rents out houses. My roommate and I are just standing there very uncomfortably. Throughout the entire conversation, he never once said the name of his business. The woman comes back with her cigarette and of course leaves it in the ocean. She's asking us a lot of questions. She asked me what I was studying in school and I told her marketing and finance and I was trying to get an internship at Raymond James because it's in St. Petersburg. And I pretty jokingly said, yeah, if you know anybody at Raymond James and you wanna give me their contact so I can like network with them, like, let me know. And the guy says that he knows somebody that's really high up and like an executive or on the board or something. And I asked, like, could I get in contact with them? Like, could you give me their information or their name? And he tells me the story that the guy that works there is actually a guy that he fishes with, but he can't give me his information because his wife gets super jealous that he's talking to me, a college student just looking for a job. And I'm thinking to myself, I highly doubt you actually know somebody at Raymond James because you wouldn't give me their name. You wouldn't say anything about it. What's going on here? Then they ask where we're staying, why we're in Florida. And we say, oh, we're just on vacation, but I'm leaving tomorrow and then my roommate says yeah I'm leaving on Sunday and the woman asks my roommate do you want to go to a strip club with us and my roommate just goes nope I'm, I'm good then she says oh you should come over to our house you should like come play some games with us we were very uncomfortable and my roommate just kept saying no no we're good and throughout this whole conversation they said maybe nine times that we were two really hot Asians both of them, the man and the woman. And that this other group of people that they met on the beach were taking notice of us too and saying that we were really hot Asians. We got out of there as soon as possible. So let me know in the comments if you think this was possible trafficking or just they wanted to swing with us. Or am I just crazy? And it's neither.
Am I the asshole for telling my best friend she should have had an abortion if she didn't want to be a single mom? I, 25 female, have been friends with Emily, 26 female, since we were five. We were attached at the hip growing up, but complete polar opposites. While I could be more outgoing, Emily preferred to stay out of the limelight. When we graduated college, we both got an apartment together out of state. And fast forward a few years, I met Tyler. It was never serious between us, just a few hookups, but we stayed friends. Emily never met Tyler while we were together. About six months after everything ended, Emily met Tyler. When she first showed me his picture, I let her know that we had hooked up a few times, but that it was never serious, and I wouldn't mind if she wanted to keep things going. But I did warn her that he wasn't a very serious kind of guy and to be careful. Three months after they got together, she found out she was pregnant. From the very beginning of their relationship, Tyler made it very clear that he did not want any kids. When he found out that Emily was pregnant, he let her know that he wanted nothing to do with the child. He offered to pay for an abortion, but that if she did not want to have one, he would sign away his rights and pay child support. Emily decided to keep the baby, and my sweet niece is now four. Emily recently found out that Tyler is engaged and is very upset because Tyler has made no efforts to be in my niece's life. Emily thought Tyler would eventually come around and they could become a family. Here's where I may be the asshole. The day Emily found out Tyler was Here's where I may be the asshole. The day Emily found out Tyler was engaged, she reached out to him and to his family, trying to see if any of them wanted to be involved in her baby's life. She's tried this before when she first found out she was pregnant and after she had the baby and paternity was confirmed, but none of them were interested. She came home crying to me about how hard it was for her to be a single mom. This was not a new conversation for us. We've had it many times since she found out she was pregnant. Things were said, and I'll admit, I handled it very badly, but I told her she knew what she signed up for when she decided to keep the baby. I let her know that Tyler had made his intentions very clear, and if she didn't want to be a struggling single mom, she should have had an abortion. Emily hasn't talked to me since this fight a week ago, and honestly, I'm not bothered that she hasn't. She made a decision to be a single mother, and it's time for her to stop living in a fantasy that he would come back and they would be a happy family. I've been as supportive as I could, but she's an adult now with a four-year-old daughter, and she needs to learn to live with the decisions that she's made. So, am I the asshole for telling my best friend she should have had an abortion? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Am I the asshole for fighting for custody of a surrogate child that I am carrying? I, 35 female, am a single woman, and in 2009, I had my daughter Emma, 3 female, to artificial insemination. I balance work and single motherhood. I chose to be a single parent as I have always wanted to be a mother, but I never really wanted to be in a relationship, romantically or sexually. My longtime friend Nicole, 39 female, and her husband Paul, 38 male, have been trying to conceive for years. When Nicole asked me to be their surrogate, I agreed. Thus began a long cycle of embryo transfers. We had four failed implantations, but the fifth one was successful and I am currently six months pregnant. A stipulation in our contracts were that Nicole's eggs were to be used as I did not want to use mine because I did not want the baby to be genetically related to me. I had to sign a new contract each time we tried a new embryo transfer. And the fifth time I signed just like I did the previous times. Nicole and Paul were getting paperwork for the adoption of the baby, so the adoption procedure will be done. Well, while I was reading the paperwork, I discovered that my eggs were used this time, not Nicole's. I called the fertility doctor, who called and confirmed that my eggs were indeed used. Nicole and Paul never made me aware, and when I called and confronted them, they said that they had no choice as Nicole was told that her eggs were not viable. I was furious. I told them that they should have asked me, but Nicole's response was that I would have said no. And to be honest, I would have said no, but I am pregnant with a baby that is just- Story time. I babysat a lot of kids in my neighborhood and there was this one night that I was babysitting a two-year-old. It was around 10 o'clock at night, so the kid was sleeping and I was just sitting in the living room. In the living room, there was a big TV, a couch, and then behind me, it was a wall with a giant window. So it was really late at night, I had nothing to do, so I was Snapchatting my friends. If you Snapchat anybody, I'm sure you know that sometimes you Snapchat really fast. You don't even know or look at what you're sending. I was mass snapping all my friends, and then one of them replied 10 minutes later. And he said, who's that guy behind you? And I turned around and no one was there, so I'm like, he's playing a joke on me. But then I get another Snapchat from this friend I had, and she lives all the way across the country. They don't know each other. And she said, I think there's someone outside. So I was really freaked out because I was alone. There was a giant window behind me. Apparently there was someone outside. I wasn't going to call the child's parents because I didn't want to freak them out. But I was scared. So then I went around the house, locked all of the doors. Sorry, it's a really long story, like for part two. Ah, <laughs> part two. Uh, so yeah, there was a guy outside the window. So yes, I did lock all the doors and everything. I made sure everything was secure. I closed the blinds. 
so for the rest of the night nothing else really happened other than this really weird thump it was like someone was knocking on a window allow me to demonstrate I ignored it because I was in denial that this was happening. The rest of the night was normal. The parents came home. I drove really fast home. And then the next morning I wake up. And apparently an old man with Alzheimer's had escaped from his little home. I did not know this because it was dark outside. And even if I did see him outside the window, I wouldn't have known this. But he was naked. Naked. So it wasn't like a mass murder outside the window, but it was a naked man with Alzheimer's looking at me through a window. It's not every teenage girl's dream, but it's really weird just knowing that a naked old man was staring at me through a window. Am I wrong for giving my wife her birthday gift early to keep my mother-in-law from stealing the idea? My wife just had her 40th birthday and for several weeks she's been talking about a special event she wants to attend, so I bought her tickets. My mother-in-law recently wrote me asking for ideas for my wife's birthday. So I told her my wife's favorite restaurants and what she expressed to me she wants to do for the family gathering. But mother-in-law insisted that this time she wants to do some sort of activity with my wife, not go out to eat. So I told my mother-in-law about the special event and that I already bought tickets. I shared this information to try to give her an idea of kind of where to go from there, not to steal my idea, of course. But anyway, for the next several days, mother-in-law was acting very sketchy and insisted she and her daughter meet up for a girl's day. I read the writing on the wall and assumed my mother-in-law wanted to steal my gift-giving thunder, so I surprised my wife with the tickets the day before. And sure enough, mother-in-law did buy another set of tickets. Am I wrong for giving my wife her birthday gift early to keep my mother-in-law from stealing my idea? I read the writing on the wall and assumed my mother-in-law wanted to steal my gift-giving thunder. So I decided to surprise my wife with the tickets the day before she met with her mom. And sure enough, mother-in-law did buy another set of tickets to the event. She even told my wife she overheard her talking about it and really wanted to surprise her before her birthday. So my wife told her that that was very kind, but she already had tickets from me. She told her mom maybe she could find someone who wanted to join and we could all go together and that would be so fun. I guess she took it in stride that day or so I hear, but the next day she called me and told me I was horrible for giving her her gift early. I asked her why she bought tickets to the same event and why she tried to give her her gift early if I'm horrible for doing the same thing. She told me it's her right as her mother and that I was horrible and hung up in my face. So am I wrong for giving her the gift early? Obviously not.